In this session, we're going to use location quotients to help us isolate our occupational strengths and weaknesses. Location quotients have been demonstrated in previous sessions to help us understand whether we have industrial strengths or weaknesses, categories where we demonstrated an industrial specialization. Let's say Iowa has a, a high location quotient in agriculture because we have significantly more workers in agriculture as a proportion of all workers than the national average. The same can be said for manufacturing and if we looked down the list we'd also find out that Iowa has a competitive advantage in the insurance industry. Well we also need to use location quotients to figure out other characteristics of the workforce and one of the most important characteristics in recent years has been the occupational makeup of your work. We, we use a location quotient to compare a local or a state economy to a national or maybe a regional economy because they do help us figure out on a comparative basis where we have specialized strengths and where we have weaknesses. And so the, and at the local level, especially at the county level, they can help us determine the suitability of certain economic development uh, prospects or, or opportunities. Now we can't get highly detailed occupational data at the small area level but we can get pretty good data. We can make comparisons or evaluations of regional economies at the occupational level at sub-state levels, let's say at multi-county regions for example. Here is the Bureau of Labor Statistics website and under subject areas you can go down to employment by occupation and if you click on that you're brought up to a, an employment statistics data site and if you click on OES data and then you click on national or state or metropolitan if you're wanting to study a metropolitan economy. We're going to look at the national right now. Uh, for now we're just going to click on the, the web version, the HTML version. And it will list by major category the types of occupations that it's possible uh, to evaluate with regard to calculating location quotients for occupations. And I'm going to just do it in these major categories in the upcoming demonstration. But it's also important to know, and we'll look at this a little bit later, that there is high, high detail in occupational specification in this labor and in, in this in this data set. And when we're thinking about our ability to compete economically, it's usually not the broad categories where we need to have strengths. It's in specific categories. Let's say it's in mathematics or in engineering or a specific kind of manufacturing occupation. We calculate location quotients for occupations the very same way that we do it for industry. In the industry examples, I only paid attention to location quotients greater than one because I use that as a mechanism for identifying export employment. We're not going to do any of that this time. We're not going to think in terms of export employment. We're going to look at all location quotients, whether they're greater than one or less than one. And what we're going to do here is figure out where we have strengths or weaknesses and what those numerical strengths or weaknesses are. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate our location quotient, which is the percentage of employment in Iowa in an occupation divided by the total number of persons that are employed in Iowa. And we put a dollar sign in front of the three because we're always dividing by that number. And we're going to divide that by the national percentage for that same occupational type. And again, we put a dollar sign in front of the three because we're always dividing by that row. And what we find out then, if we have a, a, a location quotient value that's one or greater, that indicates either we're on par with the national average or we have specialization. And if it's less than one, then we can have a comparative deficit. So for example, in management occupations, it's less than one and we would assume there's a comparative deficit for the state of Iowa. Let's reduce the decimal points down to two. Okay, I can copy this down all the way down to the bottom and we can see then what are the categories of occupations where Iowa tends to have some kind of comparative 
strength. Well, community and social service occupations, I don't know why that would be the case, but we're slightly higher than the national average. Education, training, and library occupations, again, slightly higher than the national average. Healthcare support occupations, we do have more elderly as a proportion of our population than the national average, so that might explain that. Um, let's see, sales and related, well, we look exactly like the national average in sales and related. Of course, you would have expected us to have a strong uh, comparative advantage in the ag industry, and this is, it's farming, fishing, and forestry, but this is primarily farming. So that advantage is, is evident. A minor advantage in construction and extraction. Construction, extraction is going to be mining. Construction is self-evident. Installation, maintenance, and repair occupations, a relatively strong advantage in that, a degree of specialization in that. Where we do have a pronounced specialization is in production occupations. That's manufacturing. And we also have a pronounced uh, occupational specialization in transportation and material moving. Well, that's both warehousing, but primarily transportation. Well, if you have an ag industry that's strong, and you have a manufacturing industry that's strong, you would expect there to be great demand for transportation in your economy. We can take this location quotient statistic and convert it into a comparative advantage or disadvantage in terms of number of employees as compared to the nation. And we use the, a formula that's very straightforward. It's one minus one over the location quotient, I've demonstrated this before, times the employment in that, that occupation in Iowa. And it tells us on, a, on an average basis nationally whether we have a surplus, a positive number, or a deficit, a negative number. So compared to the nation, we have about 4,368 fewer management occupations than, than would be expected were we to emulate the national average. So let's copy this down. And you can see the categories where we have occupational deficits on a numerical basis. Relatively strong deficits in management, business and finance, computer and mathematical operations, architecture and engineering. These are some of the categories where the modern economy is is growing most rapidly and yet we have very very weak comparative performance in those areas. Legal occupations, there's a comparative deficit. You know, Iowa is a relatively safe state and so protective service, prison guards and police people, we have fewer. That's that's a good thing. That's probably a good thing. Um, we can go down here, office administration and support, that's somewhat less. We have strong comparative advantages though. We've already seen this in production. This is manufacturing. In transportation. Now the farming, fishery, and forestry occupations, this only applies to support jobs for farming. Our farmers in Iowa would, would fall under management occupations. But where we have uh, in support jobs, it, there's a comparative advantage, but it's not that much. If you add up all of these jobs, these advantages and disadvantages, and I'll do that right now, it sums to zero. The data can be sorted and put into a bar graph like this one to help us get a good sense of where we have our strengths and weaknesses. In this, we can see we have very, very strong competitive advantages in these categories. We're very close to average in many of these categories right here. And then we have some pronounced disadvantage showing up in business and financial operations, computer and mathematical sciences, architecture and engineering, and to a degree, legal. And you can see the areas where the state of Iowa on a competitive and on a comparative basis is less specialized than the national average and the areas where it is more specialized.